Facebook. Fuck David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Okay? So this Sunday, we're going to start out with a song. Oh no, the love that we've shared is now a joke. The fire that burned bright has now waxed cold. Consider what you say, but please come back to me. Flashy. No, not that one. I'm going to use other part two. Uh, Consider fire that we've shared. And in, oh no, the love that we've shared is now a joke. The fire that burned bright has now waxed cold. Consider what you say, but please come back to me. Come Consider. Consider what you say, but please come back to me. Okay, that's a song I wrote called Please Come Back to Me. That wasn't me singing, that was an artist named Richard Kincaid, but that's my song, and I was playing the piano on that, okay? Oh, Lord, I knew that was going to happen. Try to put iTunes, okay? So, uh, because the prophetic word for this Sunday, Sunday, July 26, 2020, is come back to me, okay? So we're going to say a word of prayer, and we're going to dive right in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you for your continued mercy and grace. Thank you for your restoration. Thank you for the mighty power of your word. Thank you for your spirit, oh God. I surrender myself to you right now, oh God. I'm a surrender vessel. Please fill me with the Holy Ghost. Speak through me, oh God. Breathe through me, flow through me, and let what you want said be said, that you might receive the glory in all things and that your body might be edified through your mighty word. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. The prophetic word for today is, oh Lord, sorry about that periscope, I need to switch my phone somewhere else, there we go, <laughs> I had it on my laptop, prophetic word for today is come back to me, come back to me, now that's the Lord talking to us, that's the Lord talking to me, that's the Lord talking to the body of Christ. Prophetic word is come back to me. Is it possible to leave God? Yes. How is it possible to leave God? Because God doesn't change, but we can change. God doesn't move, but we can move. God can give us an assignment. God can give us a commandment. God can give us a space and a place that we're supposed to be, and we can leave it. We can leave it voluntarily. We can leave it accidentally. We can get caught up in so many other things until we miss 
we, we get off center, we can allow ourselves to be distracted by other concerns, maybe even other dreams. Maybe you have a main dream and then you have other dreams you want to accomplish, but your dreams are not in the right priority order. And maybe you haven't put the Lord first. Okay, and the only way your relationship with Christ works is if he's first. If Christ and his kingdom and, and honoring his name and loving him and building his kingdom is first in your life, that's when everything else works. If that is not right, if that is out of order, if that is not first, then nothing else in your life is going to work. It just won't. Okay, I can't fully explain that, but remember I told you spiritual truths are not for the mind. We have the brain to navigate this natural world. Spiritual truths are for, for that, your inner man. Okay? And if Christ isn't first, your personal relationship with him and your priority in terms of spreading his kingdom and honoring his name, then nothing else in your life is going to be right. So it is entirely possible to walk away from God. And sometimes you, you didn't do it on purpose. Sometimes what happened was you just got super busy. And you got caught up and then you got distracted by a whole bunch of other things that wasn't what God wanted or wasn't what God wanted in that season or wasn't your main core. Because as you've heard me say before, I've met plenty of ministers that kind of have a core of their anointing. And whatever they start out preaching or teaching or doing, they always tend to come back to that core. So evangelists, for example, no matter how they might start out, their sermons or their message or their teaching always come back to the need to get saved. Because that's the core of their anointing is evangelism, is winning people into the kingdom, winning people to Christ. Um, if you're a prophet, then no matter what you say, no matter how you start out, it's always going to come down to what thus saith the Lord. That you're going to have to say what the Lord tells you to say, and you are literally not going to have any rest as a prophet until you do. Okay, so everybody has like at least one core anointing. And you don't have to walk in a five-fold ministry office as a believer. You have at least one core anointing, and you have an assignment from God around that anointing. But it's the easiest thing in the world to let the other things you can do or let other calls. Sometimes people are trying to pull you in different directions. Sometimes people assume that because you're good at one thing, you're good at everything, which isn't true. And sometimes you assume that. Sometimes you assume because of whatever, whatever, that you could just go off down here and do that. But if it's not something you're anointed to do, and it's not something that you're called to do, then it's not going to work out long term like you think. Okay? So, it's possible to leave God. It's possible to miss God. It's possible to get caught up in a bunch of things that aren't what God has called you to do. Okay? So today, we're going to talk about coming back to God, okay? First scripture is going to be uh, more than one scripture. First scripture we're going to look at is Hosea 14.1. That's why I played that song at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, Come Back to Me. Hosea 14.1. Hosea is a minor prophet in the Old Testament. You hear me say it almost all the time now. Minor prophets does not mean their message wasn't important. Minor prophets means their books were smaller, okay? Minor prophets range from two, three, four, five chapters to maybe about 14 chapters, and major prophets are up in the 50s and 60s in terms of chapters. So minor prophet just means their message is smaller. And this is in the Old Testament. And Hosea was the one that God called to marry a prostitute, marry a serial cheater, marry a woman that would continually cheat on him, and he had to keep going to buy her back because uh, uh, God was trying to demonstrate what Israel was doing to him. And when you are in a fivefold ministry office, but definitely when you're a prophet, when you walk in the prophetic, God is going to put his heart in your heart. And God is going to put his experience in your experience so you can feel what he feels. That's kind of the, the burden or the challenge of being a prophet, which is why nobody ever volunteers to be a prophet. Um, but at some point, if you are truly a prophet, God is going to put his heart in your heart. And you're going to know what the Lord feels in a very real and personal way. That's who Hosea was. So we're going to look at Hosea 14.1. And I'm going to read it in a couple different translations. Berean Study Bible. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled by your iniquity. New International Version. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. New Living Translation. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, 
for your sins have brought you down. English Standard Version, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. So I think the idea is pretty clear there that if we find ourselves stumbling, if we find ourselves falling, God says that, number one, it's because we left him. That word return there, look it up in Strong's 7725. That word return there means to turn back in to retreat again. So in other words, to come back to your place in God. Because the Lord didn't move, but sometimes we do. So he says to return, to back, uh, come back, retreat again. He says return, O Israel, that means you can leave. He says return to the Lord your God for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Your sins have been your downfall, okay? So what that means is that the, the reason that you're struggling with certain things, the reason that things aren't working right, the reason that that seems like doors are closed or provision is stopped up or whatever it is you're struggling with is because there's sin and iniquity in your life. And sometimes we think about that as certain kinds of things. Like, for example, the only sins that the Western world tends to care about is uh, sex and money. And so when you talk about people living in sin in the Western world, they're normally talking about sex, some type of sexual situation, and they're quite often talking about finances. But God actually gave 10 commandments, okay, not just one or two. Uh, the first commandment he gave was, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Under the new covenant, he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. So it's entirely possible that your sin, your iniquity, has been you have allowed something to slide in the place of God. That something can be your career. That something can be your dreams if your dreams aren't surrendered to Christ. That something can also be your parents. Did you know that? Did you know that you can make gods out of your parents? Some of y'all look at me right now, you haven't fulfilled your purpose and your potential because you've been afraid to offend your parents and your family because you know if you step out, into what God has called you to step out into, you know, your kinfolk ain't going to like it. And so you haven't developed your potential. Some of y'all looking at this broadcast right now. It can be your spouse. Some people are so obsessed with getting married, and some people are so obsessed with being married, that they make a God out of it. And once you make a God out of it, then it begins to control your life, and it becomes more important to you than the Lord. And we're so afraid that the Lord doesn't want us to have anybody, and that's not what he says. He said, fear not, little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He says, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helper that is fit for him. God said that. So that's not true. It's just that that person cannot be God to you. And if you make that person or your marriage or getting married or being married, if you make that into a God to you, then it's going to cause you to stumble. It's going to cause you to fall. It's going to draw you away from your commitment to the Lord, and then stuff in your life is just going to stop working. So the Lord here is putting his finger on a problem. So for those of you, for me, for those of you, anybody listen to me now, listen to me live, Facebook Live, Periscope, or YouTube, or you're listening to me on the podcast, if you think you've been serving the Lord the way you're supposed to, but it looks like doors just keep closing, and it looks like the devil just keep coming, and it looks like a whole bunch of things, and it doesn't look like there's any provision or empty out, maybe the Lord is trying to get your attention. And maybe he's trying to show you that you have left your core anointing. You have left your place with him because we all have a place with Jesus. And maybe the Lord is trying to show you and tell you that you've left your place. And sometimes it can be the easiest thing in the world to do. And you may not have even done it on purpose. But uh, Bishop Jakes pre preached a sermon several months ago called Conversations in a Cave where he said God shut the whole world down so he could talk to people. Because if anything has happened since March, we here in the West, you've had time to spend with the Lord like maybe you've never had in your life. And maybe the Lord said some things to you that you never heard him say, or maybe you never anticipated him saying, or maybe you found out you didn't really know him. But one way or the other, things in your life aren't going to be right until that flow comes back, until you get in your right place with God. So the Lord's putting his finger on what the problem is. If he says return, that means that we left because God doesn't change and God doesn't move. So we got to get back to the place in God that we're supposed to be wherever that is with, with your walk in Christ, okay? And it says that uh, you have stumbled, your sins have been your downfall. 
It's your sins, it's your iniquity. Now, uh, I've said this before, but let me tell you the difference between sin, transgression, and iniquity. Sin is when you miss the mark. Sin is just not being perfect. So that's why God can say all have sinned and fall short of his glory. We've all missed the part, all, all missed the mark, and none of us are perfect but Christ. That's what sin is. Trans transgression is when you know where the line is and you cross it anyway. That's what it means to transgress, is that you know where the line is. Here's the line between right and wrong. And right over here, I'm on the right side, and I see where this line is, but I go over that line anyway on purpose. That's actually transgression. Iniquity is when you have transgressed, you have crossed a line, and then you try to act like you didn't do anything wrong. Iniquity is when you try to cover it up, when you try to play it off, when you try to act like your sin ain't sin. And God said he'll even forgive you for that, but you must confess, and you must repent. So the Lord says, you stumble because of your iniquity. That means there's been some lines that you crossed, and you know you crossed them, but you've been trying to act like it's not that big of a deal. You've been trying to act like, oh, well, what's in it? That kind of thing. Okay, that's scripture number one we're going to look at. Second scripture we're going to look at is Lamentations 3 and 40. Now, Lamentations was written by Jeremiah. Jeremiah is, <coughs> excuse me, one of the major prophets of the Old Testament. Jeremiah had a lot of prophetic words. Jeremiah had a lot to say. But he was called during a very rough time for Israel. He was called during a time where they had backslidden so bad against the Lord, their hearts were hard and they weren't listening at all. And it doesn't matter how many times God sent Jeremiah to cry out against them, Israel was not hearing it because they were so in love with their other God. So a lot of Jeremiah's uh, prophecies are very heavy, very sad. He was known as a weeping prophet because he cried a lot. Uh, a lot of very heavy things Jeremiah had to deal with. That's who wrote Lamentations. And Lamentations is talking about weeping and crying and sad times and writing down kind of a journal of my tears. Okay? So we're going to look at the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament. We're going to look at chapter 3, verse 40. That verse says, Let us examine and test our ways and turn back to the Lord. A New Living Translation. Instead, let us test and examine our ways. Let us turn back to the Lord. New American Standard Bible. Let us examine and probe our ways. And let us return to the Lord. Okay? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So, when it says let us, that means the impetus or the onus is on us. Once again, we emphasize in the fact that God doesn't change and God doesn't move. But when it says, let us, if it says, let us, that means it's something that we have to voluntarily choose to do. It's not something that <clears throat> we, you know, that happens automatically or happens automatically. Something we have to voluntarily choose to do. Let us, that means we could choose not to. And that means things are just going to keep going like they've been going until you get things straight. So it says, let us examine, let's look at that word in the Hebrew, that phrase, let us examine, means to seek to conceal oneself, to mask. So what that means is that you've got to look at the way you have concealed yourself from God, you've got to look at the way you have masked yourself from God, not that the Lord doesn't see you, but you put the mask on, you put a false face on, you've been trying to be somebody that you're not. Okay, and that can really be a struggle when you don't like who God made you to be <laughs> and you keep fighting it. Moses did that. Moses did that for a long time. Moses didn't get himself together until he was 80 years old. And he still didn't want to do what God called him to do because Moses did not want to be who he was. But he found out that God doesn't change his mind. Okay, so if you concealed yourself, if Moses said, I'm just a shepherd, I'm just here in meeting, I'm just here on the backside of the desert. I got me a nice little wife. I got some kids going on. I'm tending the sheep every day. I got a good life. He's 80. He's 80 years old. So he probably thought, you know, I tried to do that deliverance thing, but it didn't work out. So I'm going to let that go. I'm good. Uh, as my son would say, I'm smooth. Okay? And then God met him in that burning bush to let Moses know, you are the deliverer. Okay? I don't care. I didn't ask your opinion about it. Okay, go down there and stick your finger in Pharaoh's face and tell him to let my people go because that's who you are and that's what you're supposed to do. So the scripture says we have masked and concealed ourselves. Now let me say this. 
I know that some of you looking at me right now, you know what your problem is. Your problem is you have a heart of love. You have a tender heart. And you've discovered by living that that heart can get smashed. Oh, Lord, help me today. That heart can get smashed. That heart can get smashed. It can get smashed into a, a million little pieces. It can get smashed. And sometimes if that heart has been smashed too often or smashed too deeply, you know what we do? We say, I don't want to love again. We say, I don't want to be bothered again. That can happen in your relationship with God. You can love the Lord and love the Lord and love the Lord and love the Lord. And then the devil hits you so hard. The devil hits you so hard. It tests your love for God in a way that you never thought it would be tested. Or the Lord can ask you to do something you didn't think he was going to ask you to do. Like when he asked Abraham to offer up Isaac, God can ask you to sacrifice the thing that you love the most. What if God asked you to take the thing that you love the most, the thing that you've been waiting all your life to have, and sacrifice it? That's what he did. He sacrificed the son, and the son gave his life. What if God asked you to do that? See, because your love for God can be tested. Because you can love the Lord and love the Lord. So those of you that have big hearts and hearts of compassion and a lot of love in your heart, it's entirely possible that your heart has been smashed so many times that you just said, forget it. That you don't want to love. You don't want to love the Lord with the same fervency that you used to. You don't want to love yourself. You just let yourself go. You're like, Forget a healthy diet, forget exercise, just forget my dreams, just forget it. You don't want to try anymore because you don't want to love you anymore. You don't want to believe in you because remember that love believes all things. So part of loving yourself is believing in yourself. Or maybe you made a mistake and maybe you made a terrible mistake. It wasn't just a small mistake like you left the house with mismatched shoes on. You made a terrible mistake and now you can't believe what you've done and now you just... You don't want to try anymore. Or you've been hurt by someone that you love. Maybe a spouse, maybe a parent, maybe a child. Maybe they hurt you so bad that, that, that you just don't want to try. You don't want that hurt to beat with love anymore. Well, I stop by to tell you God is calling you to love again. He is calling you to love him again with the same fervency that you have before. He's calling you to love yourself because those are his two great commandments. To love the Lord your God with all that you have and to love yourself. And then to love the one next to you, your neighbor, the way you love yourself. People keep interpreting that like God is talking about the people that live across the way from you. God talks about many times your spouse. Who's closer to you than your spouse? Who's closer to Who's next to you closer than your spouse? That's the only person that you legally are supposed to be one flesh with is your spouse. Think about it. So this is what I mean when I say God is calling us to return. If you have a big heart full of love, you have been hurt a lot. God is calling you to come back to him and let him heal that heart and let him set you back in the place you're supposed to be as a loving person. Do you know why? Because he made you that way on purpose. And he misses the way you loved him. He wants you to love him with that same passion that you had before. He also misses you being you. And the world is a poorer place. Don't you know that when the loving people stop loving, the world gets poor? What is the world supposed to do when the people that are called by God and equipped by God with loving hearts stop sharing those hearts? What's the world going to do then? You see what I mean? I know that's not what you want to hear. But you have to take up your cross and you have to repent and you have to follow the Lord anyway if you want to be successful in God's kingdom. To be successful in God's kingdom, you have to go to the cross. There must be a crucifixion of your ways, your thoughts, a self-directed life. And then God will give you a resurrection into the life that he has for you. But you can't get the resurrection without the crucifixion. It will not happen. Okay? So we have to examine and test our ways. What does that mean, to test our ways? It means, uh, in Hebrew, it means to penetrate or to examine intimately. And your ways means a road, a course of life, a mode of action. That's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? 
it means that you're going to have to stop doing the shake and bake. You're going to have to stop being phony with yourself. You're going to have to stop covering up whatever you're covering up with. You're going to have to stop medicating. Some of us medicate with relationships. Some people medicate with sex. Some people medicate with food. Some people medicate with spending money. Some people medicate with a whole bunch of things. You're going to have to let that medication go. And you're going to have to examine how you've been living. And if Christ is really first or if you're just going through the motions. Okay? Your road, your course of life, a mode of action. You're going to have to look at that intimately. And then turn back to the Lord. Same thing in the other verse. To return. Okay, two more scriptures and then I'll be done. Now we're going to look at Zechariah 1.3. Zechariah 1.3. Zechariah is also a minor prophet in the Old Testament. Okay? Zechariah, you spell Zechariah with an E. It's not, we, we pronounce it Zechariah, or maybe that's just where we say it. It's actually pronounced spelled with an E, Zechariah. And we just say Zechariah, okay? Zechariah 1 and 3. Berean Study Bible. So tell the people that this is what the Lord of hosts says. Return to me, declares the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. King James Version. Therefore say thou unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, whenever you see something repeated in the Bible, God's trying to draw attention to it. God says in that verse three times, Lord of hosts. Okay? The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. What does that word hosts mean in Hebrew? In the Strong's, it's entry number 6635, and it means a uh, mass of persons organized for war, a campaign. So sometimes the Lord, when he says the Lord of hosts, sometimes he's talking about hosts of angels. And what he means is that you want the Lord to be on your side. <laughs> if the Lord of hosts is against you, he can release as many angels as he needs to to stop your way or block your way or block your harvest or turn your path or whatever. Because the Bible says that the Lord resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. So when the Lord of hosts is talking, he's got a whole bunch of stuff to work with. And that's one of the clues as to why your life hasn't been working right. Because there might be a host holding back what you're trying to do so, that, so God can get your attention. Okay? And he says, return to me, and I will return to you. What does that mean? It means we'll be intimate again because God doesn't move, but the Lord can hide himself. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said it. God doesn't move and God doesn't change, but the Lord can hide himself. He can be standing right there and you not seeing it. You can be in church and the Holy Ghost is fault when we when we went to church, because we are church online now. You can be in church and the Holy Ghost not falling and it starts falling and it don't hit you. You can be somewhere and everybody gets a vision and a revelation and a dream and you don't see nothing. Because God is right there because he doesn't change and he doesn't move, but he can't hide himself. Did you know that? Why do you think so many people have the attitude towards the Lord that they do? Because they've never had an encounter with him. You hear a whole lot of people talking about Jesus that don't know Jesus. That's why they say the things they do. They just read about him in the Bible, and they're talking about myths or things that they heard by living or things that their religion taught them, a whole bunch of things. Even Job in the Bible went through that. But they have never actually met the Lord themselves. That's why, they say, that's why a lot of people say things about the Lord that aren't true. They're not scriptural. They're not biblical, and they say a lot of things that aren't true because they don't know the Lord. They don't actually know the Lord for themselves, okay? And so the Lord can be standing right there, and he can hide himself if you didn't know that. The only way you know God is by revelation. The Lord has to reveal himself to you, okay? So you've got to do what the Scripture's been putting their finger on, is we've got to return, we've got to admit our iniquity, We've got to examine our ways, and we've got to return to the Lord of hosts so he can again reveal himself, show himself so we can again fellowship like we used to, because he could be standing there, but he can be hidden if you didn't know that. God can completely hide himself from you. Sometimes, haven't you ever been in a church service where it looks like people are making a lot of energy, spending a lot of energy, making a lot of noise, going through a lot of emotions, but ain't no wind blowing. Ain't no Holy Ghost in that. Ain't no anointing in that. Why you think that is? Okay? Because the Lord has to reveal himself. He has to be pleased with what he's seeing in your life. 
for the Spirit of God to add His power and His glory and His grace to it. And we know that God was displeased with a lot of what He saw upon the face of the earth because He shut it all down. And things are never going to be the same. We ain't never going back to the life that we had. A whole lot of people are still struggling with that, thinking that things are going to get back to normal. We ain't never going back to the life that we had. And everybody's not going to make it out of 2020 either. Whatever life we had before the pandemic hit is gone. It ain't never coming back. You're going to have to build something new. And so the thing to do is to build according to what God wants us to build, not going back to the old ways. That means you didn't learn nothing. It means we didn't learn nothing. It means we went through all this, didn't learn nothing. Okay? And finally, we're going to look at Nehemiah 1.9. Nehemiah is also in the Old Testament. Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king, but Nehemiah saw the Jews, the Hebrews coming back to Jerusalem after the captivity, and he had a burden to rebuild the wall because the wall around Jerusalem was torn down, which means there was no defense against its enemies. And sometimes in life, our walls can be torn down and it looks like the enemy just afflicts us at his whim. Some of you looking at me right now, you've been struggling with financial affliction. It looks like it's just the devil everywhere. It looks like a whole bunch of stuff go wrong at the same time and you don't have the money to take care of it. Or you've been dealing with sickness in your body. Or there's a relationship that's just, it used to be a blessing, now it's turned into a plague or a curse. Sometimes that's a sign that the wall, the hedge, around your life has been torn down. And going back to our first scripture, it got torn down because of our sin. Because they only went into captivity because of their sin. God never meant for them to go into, into captivity. Whenever the Lord turns you over into the hands of your enemies, it's because you have turned away from him. Because when you are walking with Christ where you're supposed to, God gives you victory over your enemies. Just read the Old Testament, the entire Old Testament, Whenever the children of Israel were walking in obedience and faith to the Lord, they got victory over their enemies. And whenever they turned from the Lord and turned to other gods and turned away from what they knew, eventually, if they didn't repent, they got turned over to the hands of their enemies. And some of you looking at me right now, that's what you've been going through. You felt like the walls in your life were turned down and the devil was just afflicting you again and again and again. And you cried out and you didn't understand what was happening. But what's been happening is, it's because you turned away from your place in God. That's been the problem. Okay? So Nehemiah was burdened by the Lord to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem as the Hebrews were beginning to return to their homeland after the period of captivity where they had been snatched out of their homeland by their enemies because of their sins against God. Nehemiah 1.9 says, brilliant study Bible, but if you return to me to keep and practice my commandments, then even if your exiles have been banished to the ends of the earth, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. New Living Translation, but if you ret return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. Oh, what a promise. What a promise. What a blessed promise from God. God says that if we return to him, and we, we return to him to obey and walk in the things he tells us to do. Now, let me stop there and stress again. Don't be listening to these people that tell you that you can be all right with God while you're just doing whatever you want to do. That's not the truth. That's never been the truth. Uh, I've proven it to you over and over from Scripture, but just to give you a quick refresher, how come God didn't say that to Adam and Eve when they first sinned in the garden? How come when God came upon them and they were naked trying to cover themselves and they knew they were naked because they had sinned and eaten from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? How come when God asked them what happened and they told him, he didn't say, well, that's all right. I love y'all. I understand you made a mistake. No big deal. Just go on, put that fruit back and we'll keep moving. That ain't what happened. The Lord started dropping curses. God said, because thou has done this, curse it. From the beginning, that is how God responded to their sin. So don't be listening to these people that tell you you can have a successful relationship with Christ and just do whatever you want to do. That is not the truth of. So the scripture says, if you return to me, what we'll be talking about all afternoon, get back to your place with God, get into me, get right with him, and obey his commandments and live by them. In other words, you've got to walk the way the Lord wants you to walk. 
You got to live the way the Lord wants you to live. And that's going to mean letting go of some things. That's going to mean letting go of some people. That's going to mean letting go. And it might have even been some habits and some ways that you've had for years. Sometimes the Lord can put his finger on something that you've been doing and thinking and feeling for so long. You feel like it's an intimate part of you now. And now it's like God is putting his hand on that and saying, yeah, no, that's not of me and I'm not pleased with it. So you might have to let go of something you've been doing for years. Okay? So we got to return to him and keep his commandments. I can't stress that enough. Then he says, then. Now, whenever you see if and then in the Bible, it's causality, just like in math. If, then. So like when you're doing computer programming, when you're prime, uh, programming algorithms, al algorithms or programs or code, and you include in your programming language, if then, that means if this happens, then this is going to happen. And if this happens, then this is going to happen. Okay? Well, it works the same in the Bible whenever you see if then. So when the Lord said, if you return to me to keep and practice my commandments, then. So that means you've got to do the if. You got to return and live the way the Lord wants you to live. That's when the promise kicks in. I've seen people all over the country trying to figure out how to get out from underneath this pandemic and how to get back to normal and how to move forward and all that. The reason that that's not happening in a lot of situations is because we're not doing what the Lord wants us to do. If we want the Lord to heal the land, then if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. If then. Okay? And so the Lord says, then even if your exiles have been banished to the ends of the earth, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. So the Holy Ghost is telling me that includes your family. Some of y'all have been struggling and praying. You, you want to reconcile with family members. God says, you got to get right with me. You got to walk with me. You got to do what I'm telling you to do. And then I'll bring them back. What a promise. Okay, but that's something only God can do. Now, I don't know why life works that way because I'm not the Lord. I don't know why life works that way, but I know it works that way. I know that when you get right with God, just stuff happens, stuff lines up. I don't know why. I just know that's the way it is when you're a Christian. Now, if you're not saved, then you're in the kingdom of the devil and you're living by your own will and the dictates of your flesh, and that's a different kingdom. But if you're in the kingdom of heaven, then you have to get right with the Lord. And when you do, when you start doing what God wants you to do, it's amazing what happens. The Lord starts straightening the areas out of your life. Things start happening. Doors start opening. Favor manifests. Just all kinds of things happen. And that's one of the things I've noticed that some people forget to mention when they're giving their testimony. And I mean people from, from all parts of the kingdom, from leadership to laity to People in the kingdom, they keep talking about God did this for me and God did that for me, but they neglect to mention that they had to obey God. They had to do what the Lord said to do. They had to be right with God. So, for example, if God has called you to pastor, and then you pastor like you're supposed to pastor, and then all this stuff happens, that's because you're doing what you're supposed to do. If God called you to pastor, and you're trying to be an usher, if God called you to pastor, and you ain't even in church, if God called you to pastor, and you're trying to be a deacon, then, then blessings ain't going to come because you are out of alignment. So I've discovered sometimes with leaders, and but even lay people giving a testimony, talking about God did this for me, they forget to mention because they were doing what they were supposed to do. That's why it happened. It, it, it wasn't accidental. Okay? And that's how some believers have gotten the false notion that you can just ask God for stuff or you can just name it and claim it or you can just say stuff and it's just going to happen. For you to get that max blessing, that max grace, that max favor for the areas of your life to line back up the way they need to, you have to get right with the Lord, and you have to be where you're supposed to be, and you have to do what you're supposed to be doing. Then, God says he'll bring the exiles back, even if they've been banished to the ends of earth. So that means no, no matter how far away your family was, y'all can be, have been estranged for years. The Lord will bring them back and make it right. But you got to get right with him first. Okay? And bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. That means you've got to be in the place that God has called you to be.
And some of y'all have been in captivity for a long time. For some of y'all, this pandemic has been captivity. You've got to get back in the place that God has called you to be. And that's when all this stuff kicks in. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. That's a prophetic word for this week. Thank you so much for those of you that watch me live on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube. And God bless you to those of you that are listening to the podcast. Remember, you can find everything on my website, www.prophetdavidtaylor.org. My quarter three prophetic devotional is out. Uh, Lord have mercy, did I have to fight to get it out? But remember, that's a daily walk with God in the prophetic, where you can read one scripture a day about the prophetic, meditate on it, write down what the Holy Ghost says, and then get the revelations that you need. And, but it's a journal, so you can write right on the page and keep it journal style, so you can see how God has been blessing your life through the prophetic. That's how you grow. Uh, and I got a whole bunch of stuff I say that, that I'm working on that I can't wait to release. Remember, my 150 hymns project is out. I'm writing one hymn for every song. And uh, when I release that, that's the first Friday of every month uh, on New Music Friday at noon. And also, I want you to sign up for my newsletter. There's a lot of goodies in my newsletter that you can't get anywhere else. So the way to sign up for my newsletter is on my Facebook Live page. Go click the blue sign up button right on the top banner and be sure you signed up. And there's a lot of stuff that sent out, gets sent out of the newsletter. No spam, because I hate spam, so I don't spam people, but just information, okay? And it only comes uh, once a week, okay? All right, thank you so much. God bless you. And remember, it's time for us to return to the Lord. It's time for us to come back to him so uh, he can come back to us. Now, I'm going to play a little bit of the song that I played at the beginning so you can hear it. But before I do that, I'm going to go in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost, is there anything else? He wants me to release. So when I close my eyes and speak in tongues, that's what I'm doing. All right, he said something, but it was from me. It wasn't for me to release. So we're going to lead out right there. All right, amen and amen. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't do this for money, but if you want to sow into my ministry, remember that whoever's ministry you sow into, then you begin to walk in uh, their anointing and their mantle. So if you sow into a prophet's ministry, then your prophetic will increase, your visions will increase, your prayer language will increase. All the stuff that comes with the prophetic will begin to manifest at a greater level in your life. Because remember, there's always another level with the Lord. There's always another level. I don't care what level you are. I don't care if you've been walking with God for 40 years. There's always another level with Christ. So whenever you sow into any ministry that you get blessed from, then the anointings and the mantles on that ministry begin to manifest in your life. Okay? All right. Amen and God bless. And let me play a little bit of this song as we close. song called Please Come Back to Me but I want to skip right to the chorus that's the intro oh my god I an ill-tempered but this time you wrote me I taped it to the I must have said oh no Here it is. the love that we've shared is now a joke the fire that burned bright has now what's called. Consider what you say, but please come back to me. Consider what you say, but please come back to me. That's a prophetic word for this week. Amen. God bless you. I will see you same time next Sunday.